Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and welcome to episode 316 of the Hammer Radio podcast. I'm Dustin with Last Stand Media. What's up, Maddie? Feeling pretty good. I like this episode number because I was thinking of uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the uh, oh. Austin 316. And um, no, not a uh, not Jesus Christ, the you oh, know, John 316. Of, of course. You, no, no, I, no, I know what you mean, though. <laughs> Professional wrestling. Yeah. So we got Ham 316 right. today. We hope oh, all, shit. Of our, all of our listeners are doing well. Uh, I'm doing all right. I got some, in answer to your question, some mosquito bites on the inside of my bicep, so I'm a little Ooh. itchy today. It's funny. I was outside for like all five seconds walking my dog, and that's all it took today. Dude. So they get you. That's all it takes, depending on what time what time of day, either morning or like when it starts getting dark around here, and it you can get bit up yeah. instantly. Especially this time now, of year. Yeah, it's bad. Maddie, I have a, a casual story to start the pod. You of made course. me think of this we last this. night. You made me think of this because it was like starting to get dark out, which was the perfect time to walk the dog. Because we don't like take frisk out, frisk out in the midday because it's hot out to their little feet. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't mm-hmm. want to burn their feet on the, the cement and stuff. So we're taking this the dog on a walk and there's a, a parking garage relatively close to my house attached to a hospital. And I look at... And there is a girl at the very top of the parking garage. And there's like these like um, some kind of support thing that like protrudes out over the edge. Oh, no. And this girl is standing on top of it. Oh, boy. And there's these other dudes there. And she's like taking a selfie or whatever. No. And Holly is like, oh, my God. I was like, Holly was like, oh, my God, Dustin, you got to do something. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Like, (laughs) I I was. Then they're like, hey, like trying to get our attention. It's like, oh my god! Like, I like, oh. I don't know if this is the sign of becoming like a real adult, but I was like, oh my god, these kids are gonna kill themselves. Like, this was a maybe not a kid, but she had to have been at least sixteen plus, maybe mm. sixteen twenty ish. Like, she looked like old enough to know that you shouldn't stand on the fucking top of a parking garage yeah. on a support beam hanging over the edge. So. Anyway, I, I, I didn't call the cops, but I did call the hospital and talk to their security. I'm like, hey, there's this girl that looks like she's a... I literally said to the guard, I was like, there's a c- couple of people acting like morons on the top of the <laughs> on the top of the garage. I don't want them to die. So I just would recommend, you know, you might want to check that out. He's like, mm, oh, yeah, I see him now. They're not supposed to be there. Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm but saying? Man, no, Maddie, I guess... It had, <laughs> Were you ever a, a daredevil type growing up? Because I never was. Like I would have, I would never do something like that, even uh, at my stupidest. Incident- most stupid. Incidentally, at times, a little bit, which I know is probably hard to believe now, given my more tame nature online. <laughs> sure. But uh, yeah, like I, I think of moments where you know you're in your middle school and you're egging houses, ding dong ditch. That's oh. not daredevil shit. But it's more so the daredevil shit came in when we ding dong ditched the wrong house. And this dude got so pissed. He almost ran us over with his car. Like I remember we, we, we rang his doorbell and no one answered. Right. And so we're like, ah, you know, failed attempt at pranking someone. So we're walking down this road that had like, it was really dark and it had a bend to it. And there was some woods off to the right. And I hear it's like the, like the beep beep, like someone opened their car and everyone's like walking around just casual as hell. And in my head, I connected the dots. I'm like, wait, that's got to be the guy that we just pranked. There's no doubt in my mind. And I'm glad I felt that intuition. I said, yo, he's coming. Like, we got to go. And they're like, no. I'm like, I'm like, seriously, we got to run. So we start running. And then this guy is speeding. And he bends around the corner. I'm telling you, if we did not run like that, dead. 100%. Wow. We dove into the woods. It was pretty action-packed. So where the Daredevil stuff comes in is now this guy is driving all over trying to find us. And it was like this Metal Gear Solid stealth level. We were literally crawling through backyards, like prone crawling. Dude, it was incredible. It's one of my favorite memories. But that's not really uh, risky, like I'm jumping off a cliff or something. I was never into that sure. shit. you know. But I, I, was yeah. a, I was a troublemaker. It would probably be the better term growing up. I, I love to just stir the pot a little bit. If I'm, if I'm yeah. honest, but, um, I, I fortunately shook that off over time. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I've always been, I don't know. I guess you could say I'm a scaredy cat or something. I've never been, been like that. And I was a pretty, I don't want to say I was goody two shoes, but I didn't, I didn't cause trouble in school. 
The one oh, thing I did I, do. I definitely did. <laughs> oh, Maddie. I did. Maddie, were you the kid that like people were like, oh my God, Maddie. No, no, no. Maddie. I was never that bad. I think I would say I was generally liked at school. Like I, I think. I didn't. I was not like the guy who really annoyed you because he was such a prick or he was like a, a real mm. problem starter. It was, you know, good ribbing, all that stuff. You mm, know, like mm. like there was this kid who was like a douche in my class, and you know, I'd be walking down the uh, the lane of desks, and I remember one time I took a dive and I like knocked over a desk, and I was like, "Yo, this guy just tripped me." And the teacher threw the kid <laughs> out. <laughs> and, oh, I, yeah, dude. and the guy was like, Are you "Fucking kidding me!" And it was just like one of those things where, um, yeah, that's the type of stuff I did. I would, I would dude. Talk to people. The only, I really, again, it's, I can't even consider this in the same realm, but I never got in trouble. But one time there was this math teacher I really, really didn't like because she was very rude to the class for no reason. I can't stand that. Like, don't, you know, a mean teacher that's mean, you better have a reason. And mm -hmm. sometimes they do. The, the class is bad. This lady was just mean for no reason. Mm -hmm. She signed a word search in geometry class as that you could get bonus credit for. A fucking word search makes no sense at all. And I was like, I was in ninth grade. I was in ninth or 10th grade. I was like, this is so stupid. I don't like this lady. And so <laughs> I I circled the entire word search and handed it in. Wow. And then she was like, Dustin, what is this? I'm like, I was like, well, all the words are in there. <laughs> and then she just. That's a galaxy brain. Yeah. Like she ripped that. it in half. I didn't. She didn't, you know cause any trouble i was well behaved and i think that she knew that the, the assignment was stupid but i didn't yeah. get the bonus points well i was gonna say i would assume you did not that was gonna be my next question <laughs> <laughs> anyway anyway maddie yeah. video games video games let's talk video about games. them before we do that though i just want to remind everyone of uh last week's announcement um our someone in the audience came up with a better way to probably have labeled it so i do want to run with that a little bit where they said oh i'm looking forward to like a ham 2.0 that's kind of what this new rendition we're transitioning into is going to be. It's still going to keep a lot of the DNA of Ham, but it's going to be like a new take on it. Uh, starting at episode one, for those who didn't hear, um, the idea is um, in a Spark Notes version here um, that we want to do Ham Radio Live. So it'll be myself and another co-host. Um, we'll be getting together and we'll go into Discord and we'll get some of the audience to call in. We'll also read write-ins via Super Chats or patron questions like we do now. Um, and make it a show based around interactions. One thing I did want to clarify, though, is some people are like, oh, I like the general news nature of this show. I like the structure of it. A lot of that's going to be retained. Like, we're still going to hit the highlights of the week like we do in this show. Um, none of that is going away. It's just a fresh take to get some new thoughts, ideas on the table um, and get the audience more involved. Because my favorite section of this show is the patron questions. It seems to be the one that most of the comments and replies are attracted to. So I want to build a show around that also because this is such a super saturated space that my mindset is it's time to do something new and different um, and take a risk with some live call-ins and get some more people involved and um, change up the nature of how podcasts are done in gaming because they're they're all pretty similar. So we're going to we're going to take that leap of faith. It's a little scary uh, just because I know some people will, will, will move on in the transition, but um, I also trust that uh, people will find something they really like. And it'll be easier for me to manage in all fairness. So there's that bonus there. But beyond that, um, that's what's happening in just a couple of weeks now. Next week, we will not be doing ham radio because uh, it's the last stand media meetup weekend where we're doing some really fun stuff. Um, I'm going to be leaving Friday morning to meet up with Dustin and all the other last stand boys and girls. And um, so that will be pretty much a scratch day in the terms of any recording we can do. And given that we're going to be really jam packed earlier in the week, you know, cause I have to pre prepare content. So does Dustin. So does everyone. Um, we're just not going to have time to record. So the following week will be episode 317, And that will be our final episode of the ham radio podcast. As you know, it um, to make things clear, I did have a more ceremonious final episode idea in mind. Um, and just to be fully transparent, it would have involved Noah and loan kind of starting it, uh, or ending it, sorry, how it began, uh, but Lone was not allowed to do it, so I didn't feel comfortable doing one without the other, and it sort of started to leave this feeling of, you know what, like, I, I like I don't want to have someone be left out in the history of Ham, and so I think I'm just going to run mostly a standard episode with a lot more feedback uh, from the patrons and, and, and write-ins and 
We'll just make it a little more enjoyable, so to say. And a, a nude reveal of, of Maddie. Of course. Sure. Why that's not? kind of the that's like the big celebrate yeah. the last final thing. Give Maddie will to reveal himself. For, right. That's important. Completely naked. Yeah. Fuck YouTube. Yep. It's happening. <laughs> Throwing it all away. I need some people to stick around for Ham Live. They know what they're getting. That that's that's what it's gonna be. So we hope that uh, you all enjoy and look forward to that. And Dustin, let's talk video games. Let's do it. So main bit of news this week was Gamescom. This was uh, the, yes. the big the big show between Xbox and Jeff Keighley. I have a list of pretty much every reveal and announcement that was there, but I want to dish it to you and just kind of shoot from the hip here. What's caught your eye the most this week out of all the less announcements, more so like reveals and uh, gameplay trailers, all that we saw has, has anything in particular grasped you? No, wow. <laughs> not, I mean, wow. not, uh, I, there's nothing really, I think that I'm extremely excited for there. I mean, there wasn't really a lot of announcements per se. Right. Like, is it fair to say the biggest announcement of something we didn't know about before is Saints Row? Yeah, probably out of everything that's like a popular brand. I mean, you're, you're thinking, you're, you're forgetting Doke V. Oh right, yeah. What what was up with that game, man? That was something. I don't know, man. But that shit looked kind of like it, I was saying. It looked like everybody's golf on an art style front, but then it was like Pokemon and very. I don't know what, man. That game was an an acid trip almost. But yeah, I, I kind of if the frame rate's better, I kind of want to play it. Sure. Yeah. It. Uh. I think what my chat was saying was like, okay, the music's weird. Uh, Cause it's like, you know, K-pop type mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stuff, not just like normal, like not like BTS. Like this was like a little more kiddish cartoonish yeah. K-pop. It was, there was, it was unique. How about that? <laughs> but when you're, they're like, D dude, pay attention to what's actually happening. It actually looks awesome. I'm like, you know what? You're actually right. It is <laughs> again, like you said, Astro trip. I don't know what's going on with that game, but it, I, I'm intrigued. Enough yeah, they to, had to deep it. Skateboarding, rollerblading. You had like paragliding. It, it, I don't know what the idea of this game is, but I was wholeheartedly intrigued by it. Not like a game of the show because it looked really rough at times, but I think people who were quick to judge it might be missing out on something. It looked looked really neat to me. Maddie, I need to talk about Halo because I didn't get to talk about Halo on Sacred, of and I know you talked about Halo on Duke. Oh yeah, we talked about Halo. One of our longest but, uh, episodes. Apologies for that, by the way. But um, my goodness, did we talk about Halo? Yeah. What are your What are your thoughts on what we saw for the release date, the trailers, and some updated comments afterwards on why there weren't any, there wasn't any campaign gameplay? They said that it was because that they want to make sure it's polished before they show it again. Which a little bit of head scratch. Uh, uh, it's it's September. Mm -hmm. Like, the, it should be. <laughs> I, Maddie. I agree. Dustin, there even today they were they, they were showing, they were saying that like the way a, a, a multiplayer progression is going to work is through uh, challenges only that are connected to the battle pass. There's no like match XP. There's no career rankings. None of that. And it, you know, admittedly, n once again, this is a situation with Halo Infinite where it's got a leg to stand on. It's like, oh, it's not a deal breaker. But they're saying it's not at launch. That was the, the words of one of their community managers. Not XP and leveling up won't be there at launch. And I'm like, oh, my God. So the only progression is completing challenges that are tied directly to the battle pass. I'm going to keep an open mind. But to my point that you were touching on just there, it's a bit of a red flag, in my opinion. I know some people are going to call me extreme. But, like, if this was any other series that did not have this level of importance, I think we would be a lot more concerned. Sorry, I interrupted you, though. This, these are your Halo thoughts. Go on. I feel like this game, I mean, it's just red flag after red flag after red flag after it's red a roller flag. Coaster. But it's difficult because everyone played the beta, the the preview, loved it. It was great. And yeah. I'm not trying to undercut that experience. But that can be a good experience at the same time as these red flags existing. Mm -hmm. This game is coming out basically at the absolute last possible time. That it can. Yeah, within like, 2021, for sure. It's coming out, what is it, December 8th? Yep. So it's coming out within the first two weeks of December. 
I don't think it's really possible to release a game any later than that. So close to if you want it to be a holiday game, right? Yeah. Like it would just be stupid to release it after that. I'm sure someone will be like, well, this game released at the third week or whatever. It's like, no, you know what I mean? You got to give people time. Like if someone goes out shopping in between December 10th and 24th, that that game or that console or whatever is on the shelf or whatever. So it's going to be a surprisingly busy December when you look at that and Dying Light 2 is one I'm looking right. forward to. If you're an Xbox fan, you got stuff like the Gunk and Shredders coming to Game Pass day one though that month. Um, it's funny to see the industry really fill out the counter. And you think of something like Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm really not concerned on how this game's going to sell because, um, for example, Smash is a game that that continues to do extremely well and is still very relevant, um, even though it released years ago and it released in December. Granted, Smash is a bit of an anomaly. You know, it's strong enough to do that. But I think Halo is a strong enough brand to do so. But I don't. I'm with you on the idea that this this game is a roller coaster. Um, because I don't know what the the conversation would be like if that technical preview wasn't so encouraging. Because it plays well. But even then, I feel like there is a fair caveat in the conversation of, hey, we only. At least this is what I've been saying. I haven't seen many others saying it. I'm not stating I own this perspective, but. I don't see it often where it was fun mechanically, but you were playing bots in 4v4 matches. We haven't extensively tested the PvP. We're going to eventually see Big Team Battle. I think that'll be the next technical preview, but we don't know what that's going to be like. We don't know how some of the balancing will play out. Um, I think there's other things that just you couldn't have seen. It's no one's fault. You just could not have seen in a three-map 4v4 bots only lobby. Um, there's stuff that right. just player interactivity shines a light on. And while they did unlock PvP very late into it, it wasn't long enough for us to get a really strong look at what that was like. So um, I just think, yeah, there. if that wasn't there, it would be a much different conversation. Um, it shows that I think on a gameplay level, it should be a fun game, should feel good. Uh, but there's just these elements around like now we're talking about the concerns of progression I feel like the next look at the campaign should be encouraging. You'd hope so. Um, You'd hope. After over a year. I understand their patience on one front, right? The last time they showed the campaign is what kickstarted all of this, right? The, this like, oh, my God, what is wrong with this game? I didn't think it looked that bad. Um, but now with, like, co-op being gone, Forge being gone, I feel like I thought the people who were overreacting going, this game's not going to be ready at all, may have actually kind of been right. So... It's it's been interesting because if you catch me one week, like all they all it takes is one good bit of news for for people to swing the other way because it's been that mm -hmm. back and forth, right? Yeah. yeah, it's um, it's unfortunate. I want it again. I feel like I always have to reiterate this. I want this game to be so good. I'm playing through all the Halo games right now. Mm -hmm. Every time I'm I message loving you it. on Discord, I see it. You're playing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you know, I'm almost done with Halo Three now, and. Nice. It's been such so good going back and remembering how good these games are. And I just desperately want this. I want I want Halo to be back. So which by the way, I pre-ordered the Halo Series X. But Oh, you got it? Wow. Well Dustin, I, you got a pre-order touch. You managed to get in there and <laughs> and, and and seemingly like you'll you'll DM me like Got an extra console if you want, like the Switch OLED. You were like, mm, yeah, got that. You set me up with my Series X. I mean, well, and technically, uh, you set me up with my PlayStation Five as well. Now that I think about it, did I? Yeah, you you gave me the Amazon link for it. <laughs> oh, oh, right, yeah. that is right. Yeah, I was gonna say, Maddie, are you interested in this Halo Series X? Uh, I don't. I I know this is gonna sound like I'm a, a little white knight. I'm on my soapbox. I almost don't feel comfortable. Because, and, and the fair counterpoint to this, I'll mention in a sec, but I almost don't feel comfortable because I got one and they're already so hard to get <laughs> that my mindset mm -hmm. is like, let someone else get that pre-order. And so sure. on the other side though, I can literally take my current Series X, wipe it and sell it. And that's mm -hmm. it. I just have the limited edition one sitting there. Now, right. Dustin, that's a pain in the ass. I kind of oh, don't want to do that. So 
there's also that involved. But I would, I kind of want to. I, it, it's a good. Here's the thing, right? It doesn't. Have, it is a Halo console, but it doesn't. As far as I saw, it doesn't have Halo written on it. Like it's no. Yeah, like the design of it, it's one of my favorites in the terms of as I've looked at it more and more of limited edition because it doesn't – it's like it doesn't stick the brand all over it, right? Like you can tell it's Halo, but if you don't know it's Halo, it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. It's just a cool-looking console. You know what I mean? Right. Well, if you want this pre-order, you can think about it because I'll give it to you because my intention mm. Fuck. I was, was to pre-order it. <laughs> I, I – I pre-ordered it because I thought I someone I know will want this, and I would rather help someone I know get it than hmm. uh, than have a, a scalper or a bot get it. You don't have to think. You don't have to decide right now. I'm, think I'm, about I'm gonna, it. I, like I gotta ask though, and I gotta put it out there so maybe the audience could say something. Dustin, am I like doing my job poorly if I don't unbox this console or something? Like if I'm not talking about it on the channel? Like is that you know I've noticed Halo does decent on my channel. Because everyone's yeah. so excited about it and they're invested in Xbox content. I'm like, is this something I should be having and talking about? And, or like, am I am I dying on my sword too much here? Falling on my sword, rather. Um, I can't decide right now because I feel like morally I'm in the right, but the businessman Eddie, is speaking as well. So if you sell your current Series X at cost, you are doing someone a favor True. because no scalping, the Series right? X is already – difficult to get i mean if you even wanted to be extra nice you could sell it for a straight 500 i would not charge someone yeah. tax no i would you I know would do that yeah and there you mean you take good care of your consoles i don't think your controller has been in your asshole or anything like that but i don't know <laughs> so as long as that's like a reoccurring didn't i say that on the show another time about i don't a controller being i, I feel like ass. i do recall that that's why i burst out laughing i was like damn that was a, <laughs> that was well, a joke i didn't expect to be resurrected the reason why i say that Remember those the white 360 controllers? Yes. That came with yeah. the 360. Oh god, yeah, they got. They gunky. always got nasty, and I remember my friend Kevin was like, "Oh yeah, those white controllers. They always get nasty. They look like they're in someone's asshole." <laughs> and so now I always think of like a controller in someone's asshole. I just hate the ones that like I go over a friend's house. So you could see around like the D pad. It was like a little yellow. Oh. I'm like, what? What happened, man? Like, why? Why is it this yellow? Take a care no. of your stuff. No, yeah, controllers should never be yellow. Yeah, right. You know? So, but yeah, if you sell it to someone at cost, you know, 500, you're doing someone a favor. You're giving them a slight deal because they don't have to pay tax and it's in demand. Mm -hmm. And with the Halo Series X, you make it a video on your channel and you make money from that. And that helps. Now you're talking. So you literally would make money on this <laughs> overall because you're selling your old Series X, getting the Halo one. Which hmm. your net is going to be by minus fifty because this the Halo one's fifty extra yeah, bucks because right. it comes with Halo. Yeah, but you'll make money on the ad rev on the video. Oh, so does it come with a physical copy of of Halo? I don't know if it's physical. Oh, if it might it's... be digital. I mean, not that it matters because I guess I would just go out and grab it. But if it came with a physical one, I don't remember because here's the thing. Like, I think it was the was it a PlayStation? Consoles have lately started to ship with like these bundles that come with digital codes yeah for the game i don't like that i i think it's great for the environment <laughs> but i don't like opening it and the games are on a slip of paper it it right really pisses me off yeah so i'm looking at the um the page on the xbox website it actually doesn't say hmm. if it's digital or not but i'm you know what? Someone put actually the box out. Uh, Halo Series X box. Let me look. So it may be. But yeah, dude, the, the codes. um, The codes are disappointing. It's like you want to have stuff <laughs> yeah. like an actual thing well, with a big investment like that. I think it's understandable, right? You just spent like five hundred, six hundred dollars with tax. It's like, you know, give, give me give me a little something to hold here beyond the console. Wait, Maddie. Oh. I didn't know this. It even powers on and off with custom Halo themed sounds, just like the the old ones. I remember the Reach console did that. Mm. Special Halo sounds, mm. and the fan at the top is no longer. You know how that like the, on when you look at it from an, a, an angle, you can see the green. Yeah, it's blue. Oh, see, here's the thing. 
a member of the audience called my bluff on one front. This year, I bought off of eBay a R2-D2 Xbox 360 because I had never owned one. And I said in my video talking about it, I was like, I've never really been crazy about limited consoles. You know, I'm always looking at the TV. But the materialistic side that we all have buried deep within us wants that shiny new toy. And so I was thinking to myself, well, if I already got one limited console for Xbox, by the way, that's like my favorite limited console of all time. Yeah. That, that R2-D2 one. I like the sounds, the look of it, the controller comes with a C3PO. Which I love it. So that's my special exception, but maybe I'll make one here. But the thing I got to consider, Dustin, is what if they do a Starfield console? Now, now I'm up Shit's Creek without a paddle because I definitely want that. Uh, I definitely yeah. want that, whatever that is. Not because of like Starfield hype, but just that's a Bethesda Game Studios console. I don't, I don't know if they've ever done that. What are they doing in the yeah. cloud console? I mean, this is a slippery slope. That is true. You got to pick and choose what you want. Uh, you can't be buying yeah, do these. Do I get uh, into a cycle? Do I start collecting these consoles? I think that's that's disgusting. Some people do that. I just, I have to think on this. Hold that pre-order. Okay, I'll hold it. I'll hold it for you, Maddie. You got first dibs. Um, it's not going anywhere. I mean, so at the very worst, I'll like. I was thinking if no one actually wants it, maybe I'll just keep it. But I really, <laughs> I, part of me is like, it's nice. Uh, I, I have to keep in mind like. Sometimes with like Amiibo, this happened to me and I was able to shake myself out of it. I'm like, do I actually want that or do I want it because it's limited? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, that's what I do in my those vinyls. Are... Yeah, they're, I want them because they're limited for sure. Right. And I'm like, I really don't need this Series X, this Halo one. Um, but I, Maddie, you're talking about that materialistic side. You're like, oh. Yeah. Everyone's got but it. But Maddie, you have, an you have a business reason. I do. <laughs> I do have so, something I can lean into. So anyway, uh, oh yeah, okay. So we talked about Halo. We talked about the console, and there's the the, the um the new controller too, which mm. eh, I don't really. I'm not into the the green so much, I even though I know so it's supposed sick. to look like Chief. It looks so but, good, but two hundred dollars good. Woo! Mm. That's two hundred U.S. A, dollars. U.S. dollars. Man, That's shout right. Shout out to Canada and Australia who are <laughs> paying an arm and a leg more. Um, right. Yeah, the the controller is like a hard no for me though. Like that's you can make me budge on a console. Like there's tears to it, but the the controller, like unless it's Joy Cons, that's my exception, right? Or, or a customized Game Boy shell, like where you can see it while you're playing. Otherwise, it's you know who cares at that point. I feel like it's kind of shitty. Not shitty, but I think it would have been nice for them to release it in both the a regular and the the elite. So yeah. that if people wanted to spend whatever it is, 65, 70 bucks, mm -hmm. uh, they could have done that instead. But they have I no. I would have considered that more than 200. I know Cog right. bought it. Cog pre ordered it during oh, the show. Shit. Yeah, he, he said he pre ordered it like while he was live for the stream. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, why not? That's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I, dude, I pre ordered that Series X during, during my stream. Oh, really? Uh, wow. Yeah. So. Anyway, I'm trying to think of other Gamescom. Duh. Saints Row, Marvel Midnight Suns, the 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 Firaxis Marvel game, right. tactical RPG. That's pretty big. Yeah, that's what, pretty big. What did you think of that one? I'm a little. I'm conflicted just because I like Firaxis. Mm -hmm. I like XCOM, even though XCOM Two, uh, I didn't like how oh. you had timed. Hmm. Like everything was not everything. Was it the but, first one timed as well? I don't think so. So, I don't know. Some new XCOM 2. I've always wanted to go back to it, but it didn't hit right for me at the time. Gotcha. And the other thing is that you know this, Maddie, is I'm just not big on Marvel stuff yeah. at all. Yeah, you hate life. So, I'm, I'm interested in this purely from, like, a, a gameplay standpoint, like playing a tactical game from Praxis. Right. But I'm wondering, I feel like people have instantly drawn the conclusion that this is like marvel xcom and i don't know if that's really no, the case not. they they confirmed like no permadeath um, oh yeah they confirmed that the way they described it is they created this whole new superhero that you're going to play as and you're going to like run around these open world areas in between missions and build your relationship they said with your allies 
the way they described it was more of a tactical RPG. I'm actually open to this because for those who are OG ham listeners, they'll remember when Square Enix announced Avengers. It just said Square Enix is Avengers. There was no, as far as I remember, involvement of Crystal Dynamics. But because it was Square getting that, a lot of us thought, myself and Carrick included, what if it was like this cell shaded uh, turn-based RPG, kind of like plays like a JRPG, but it's the Avengers, right? Right. Like Final Fantasy Avengers is what we were thinking. And that sounded incredible. So to me, this is sort of that moment. Maybe, obviously, it's not the Avengers, but that's fine. You know, this sounds even more interesting because this is a comic from the 90s that they're pulling from. Like, it's something more obscure. They're using, like, Blade, Ghost Rider, um, and, they're, and they're pulling from all these different sources. And uh, I think it's new and refreshing for people who are sort of having that Marvel fatigue, like you and I have talked about a lot. I'm experiencing it, where to me, this is exciting because it's very different. But um, I just, I, I think if it is that turn-based rpg like and the systems are which i trust for access to do are deep i will be all over this game all over it because it's something i wanted four years ago i think is when they announced that they had avengers so i'm happy that they're doing this but do you find yourself in a similar ballpark on that front mechanically speaking yeah i'm just curious i mean they have found ways for access they They have their, like, established formulas, and sometimes when they deviate from it, it doesn't turn out well. Mm -hmm. I'm specifically thinking of Civilization Beyond Earth. I never played Which is, like, it's... uh, (laughs) Skip it. It's not... Well, I personally... Holly and I, as I've mentioned, are both big Civ fans. Holly is a bigger Civ fan than me, and that game simply did not do it for us. And I'm trying to remember, like... So in Civilization, you normally have a tech tree that is like linear left to right. right. And in Beyond Earth, they did a tech web. And so it's like all over the place. It's very confusing. Hmm. If, I, if I remember, it's been a lot Almost of years. Like a sphere since I grid, that. if you will. In, yeah, well, it's like fantasy. you start at the beginning. Yeah, actually, like sphere grid. That's exactly a great analogy. Okay. So you like start somewhere and then you have to like web out in certain directions. And so it's hard to track where you're going with it, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about this one for sure. I kind of, it was so weird. I saw, the, I mean, they had that, uh, you know, the concept trailer or whatever you want to call it. Cause people get mad, are getting mad about people calling it CG trailers because it's like all video games are CG, but you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows what we're talking about. So I'm, I'm calling them concept trailers. The one guy from Fraxis did an interview with IGN where he was describing the gameplay. I hate that. And I was like, which they're doing that right now with Elden Ring, which written previews are a little different Mm -hmm. to me. But I was just like, dude, you have everyone's attention on this game right now. I just feel like it would be so much better of a strategy to be like, here's the concept trailer. And then we're also releasing a gameplay trailer or, uh, you know, something like yeah, I know they're really doing hit a people. gameplay reveal. I, I want to say it was September 1st. Don't quote me on that. But I know it's soon. At the same time, there's got to be some strategy where they look at and think from a marketing perspective. Let it circle. Let it catch people's attention. Let them know when they can see more. And you and I share the same mindset of like just show gameplay. However, I'm not a CG guy. I never have been. Most people know that. But this was a CG right. trailer that kind of got me. And I think it was, mm. once again, kind of that surprise of... Uh, you know, the Midnight Suns. I've, I've never heard of this part of them. Like, literally never. Like, at least something with Spider-Man, with Mr. Negative, I had heard things about him. I knew nothing, but I had heard about him. This is, like, com- a complete blindside hero group, a new hero. Like, everything felt new about it, where I was very intrigued by it. And knowing it's Firaxis, you know, that, to me, is what ups it a little bit, because I do love XCOM. Uh, I do agree with you, though, when they deviate a little bit, they try these little experiments, now you bring that up. I never played Beyond Earth, but I, I do think of something like Chimera Squad, which I know Carrick really liked. For I think it's like a ten dollar game, um, but I just their their little in betweener titles never have connected for me. Um, it's just been those main XCOM launches. So this will be a real test to see if they can go beyond that, especially since they're deviating from the XCOM formula in a couple of ways, right? So right. We'll also see if they do base management. That stuff is important to 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 be open to. Um, but I think between this and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 
coming out in just a couple months. Uh, I think people are going to be really interested in these Marvel games because they are not what Avengers was, which was a supreme disappointment. I got one last take on Gamescom, sure. Maddie. Overall, I mean, I don't know. Just real quick, like Saints Row, not. I've never been a Saints Row guy. It's cool. I'm glad that people are excited for it. Obviously, there's a place for that, like a GTA style wacky game. Not really my thing. But my last takeaway about Gamescom is that Xbox event, dude. Mm. Like, <laughs> here's a the, here's the issue is that you know they set expectations. They said this is going to be about games coming out this year i was like okay (laughs) but i don't know like maybe is it a problem with me that i was like man that was 90 minutes of nothing and Mm. you give 10 minutes to talk about trebuchets or whatever from (laughs) it turned into history channel for an extended period of time yep i was like and i made a tweet that did pretty well around this time and I wasn't trying to like score console war points. I know that there was like a lot of discussion around it where I was basically like, you, I don't like Sony not saying anything, but on a day like today where you see everyone's like, wow, what was that Xbox sh- stream? Mm-hmm. Like, I kind of get it. Like I yeah. get why they, that Sony doesn't want to speak up unless they have something to say and they can use other platforms like they did for Gamescom to say, Hey, here's horizons release date. Here's another little trailer for a small thing we're doing with, uh, not small, but for Death Stranding, the director's cut. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, man. These companies, the problem is these companies are going to keep doing these streams that they say really nothing, and we're just going to keep watching them. So, I don't really know what the solution is unless we just say no, (laughs) but we're not. I think the reality is when Xbox makes an announcement or PlayStation, any platform makes an announcement of a, a. Uh, showcase that has the chance to have exciting reveals even when expectations were in check with xbox i think it was fair to say like oh halo should be here that'll be great to see that's worth sitting through um that there's just too much for creators and and their audiences to lose out on to not watch it so i think everyone will sit down each time until these companies just get it right and in this case xbox just didn't need a showcase a lot of this could have been announced through because i'm looking at my notes for defining duke like there's the the Force of Horizon 5 stuff is fine. I think that was perfect for the show. Age of Empires 4 was stupid. Um, but they had stuff like State of Decay 2. Wasteland 3 got a little DLC. Um, Humble Bundle brings indies to Game Pass. Like There were decent announcements, but it was just overall like a really weirdly paced show where stuff like Age of Empire 4 and Microsoft Flight Simulator, I think, really killed it. And then there was stuff like The Gunk, which didn't get an extended look, uh, where... This would have been better to reserve for a blog, but then what? what's odd is the show could have been so much better if they took the announcements, get this, from Jeff Keighley's show and put them on their own because, yeah. of course, Jeff Keighley has more views, but why are you hosting your own if viewership is a question for you or a problem for you? Don't you want to draw people? So putting Crossfire X trailer in there, where's that? Boom, put that in. Putting in, of course... Right. Halo and its release date made a lot of sense. Um, there was one other Xbox thing that's slipping my mind that was at Gamescom opening night live. But yeah, the Xbox showcase was just, um, I wouldn't even say disappointing because I didn't have high expectations. It was just like, it's like a once a year ritual for Xbox to like have this very off-putting showcase. Like last year was the, the gameplay showcase with no gameplay. This year it's oh, like, yeah. hey, we're doing only announcements for 2021 and they don't even hit some of their major 2021 titles. <laughs> like, well, what? here's the funny part. It's just like they set the expectation saying, oh, we're only talking about 2021 games. So everyone thinks Halo, right? How couldn't you? But they can't tell you. They can't tell you that they're saving Halo for the Keeley stream because if they do that, no one's going to watch their sh- Not no one, but. Less significantly people. less people will watch their stream sure. because they're only they're interested in seeing Halo. So in a way, it when I when you put it like that, it's a bit of a bait and switch. Like it's like, oh, yeah. this is our stream. Yeah. This is the Xbox stream. 
for this year's games, and we have a very big game coming out this year. They didn't say that, but we all know that. Mm -hmm. So, and then, dude, it's just a thing, too, where it's like, if you want to do updates on your game and have a stream just about updates, that's fine. It does not need to be 90 minutes long. Yeah, I'm of the mind, I said this on Defining Duke, that Xbox needs to figure out their presentation platform sooner rather than later. Because you've got stuff like Twitch at ID at Xbox, which just sucks. It's not yeah. it's not a good way to showcase those indies. It hurts those games. Um, there's just too much fake energy driven into that showcase, and it's way too long. And then you've got stuff like this where they don't have a platform to show off the smaller things. Like they're like a homecoming update for State of Decay 2 is exciting. A new DLC for Wasteland 3 is exciting, but are they showcase exciting? I love these games, but no. Um, and you throw in stuff like World Update 6 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Gamescom showcase, it, it, it even if you put expectations in check, you're making a showcase during a big show week. So people are going to be looking for something substantial of some kind. Um, and in a way, they got it. They just had to wait. But when you're making your own showcase, I think it says something clearly different to what they are viewing it as internally. So they need to check that type of stuff in, in my eyes and uh, create a, I would say, a smaller Xbox show. Like they used to have like inside Xbox, but like something... Yeah. That's not state of play level, but just like a update show because they have these games that are so recurrent flight simulator, sea of thieves. Of course, contraband is going to be one of those. Like it's going to go on and on. There's going to be so many games that get these continuous updates. You're going to need a platform that just says like, Hey, this is the Xbox update platform. where like you tune in. It's no new announcements except for literally updates on things you know about. And that's yeah. it. Like that's what they need. That makes sense to me. Yeah. That would, having something that could you know it's you gotta you gotta set the i mean they again they set the expectation but it's like maybe they didn't go quite far enough and even then didn't need to be that long but the only last thing i'll, I'll just say about that is that fucking borderland ship Ugh. That was, uh, I, I threw yeah. up in my mouth oh, like when that? I saw that. I thought it was that. cool. I thought it was really cool. Uh, well, here's the thing. I don't like Borderlands. That should be clear, guys, oh, that there's okay. an inherent bias. I feel like even if it was something I liked, it looks like a uh, like ketchup and mustard ship. Well, you put it like, that way. Floating around in, in the, a very a very <laughs> beautiful game and suddenly got this red and yellow boisterous mm -hmm. ship that just i'm like no i thought no. it was uh i thought it was cool because more so less the borderlands inclusion and more so between this disney i was like all right sea of thieves is getting to that point where brands see value in crossing over with this game like it's that big now uh sure. and i'm wondering what they're gonna do next so to me it was exciting because well i thought it was cool looking um I'm not as big on Borderlands as I once was. Thank you, Borderlands 3 and pre-sequel for that. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm wondering what they'll do that could capture someone like me. Because I am I hate Pirates of the Caribbean. I really do. I, I don't like those movies. And then um, Borderlands is neat, but I don't feel strong about it. So I wonder what they're going to do to get someone like me. Like reach a little bit. Otor further. ship. Yeah, right. Star Wars ships. and <laughs> It's just like a that Star work, Destroyer. Though. But it's like through... <laughs> That would work. It's like it's just a vessel on the water instead. It doesn't make any sense. Um, but. speaking of Star Wars, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, Spring twenty twenty two. Yes, yes. Any feelings on that? So, I think Lego games are cool. They and I've enjoyed some of them, but the formula is a bit stale for me. Mm -hmm. But that's what's intriguing about this game is it looks like they're changing it up. So I am intrigued by this game in particular. I mean, they sure have taken their time in, mm -hmm. in making this game, which mm -hmm. I'm not saying that's a bad or a good thing. Sometimes a game, it's kind of a catch-22. It's like either the game was in development hell and it's going to be bad, or it's like they've really been cooking this for a long time and yeah. it'll be great because I, of it. I do think it's a mix of both because when you read about the game, it's like a remaster of every prior Lego Star Wars game and level. And then right. it's adding eight and nine in to make it a full package. It's easily, you can tell, their most ambitious game. You look at the gameplay changes they made for third-person shooting, for lightsaber combat. I was like, this looks really impressive for a Lego game. And even then, if you put the bar there for a Lego game, you remove that. 
it right. looks like a really solid title. I'm very excited to see what they do with it. You know, I think I'm not alone here at the audience. Like Lego Star Wars was, pardon the pun, a bit of a building block, though, for my love for Star Wars. It was that and KOTOR. Like, those were the games that got me into Star Wars. And so to see it coming around to where it all began with the Lego games, I'm very very excited for this one i hated that it was spring though dustin i was saying when they show it off it's a little ballsy now but i was saying like oh november i was like they're gonna get it out this year yeah like i was like it's been in development long enough they're gonna surprise us this is a game that we've all been waiting for it's lego it's star wars it'll sell give it a couple months that's it no spring 2022 so that sucks to see but ambitious looking title yeah i'm excited to see it i remember at e3 people I did not get invited to preview it. I'm not bitter, but mm. um, the uh, people that did, I'm really not like, you know, it's whatever. Um, right. But the, I remember hearing at that E3, people that got to see it were like really impressed by it. And I was shocked. I was like, mm-hmm. it's not just another Lego game apparently. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I, I think it, I think it is going to surprise a lot of people when it comes out. It just looks like that type of game. that's going to punch above its weight possibly. Uh, right. we talked about horizon a little bit, but what do you feel about a February release date for this game? February 18th, 2022 for those who haven't heard. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, they maybe could have come out a little sooner and said that it was delayed, uh, just because it's not good when it's like a confirmed rumor is leading the narrative on your game. Mm-hmm. But anyway, you know, the, the Netherlands went back into lockdown after, the, their state of play. So I think that they really did think that it would might have been possible to get this game out uh, this year. But point. I think that pushing it off till then makes sense. That time of year, though, Maddie is getting a little busy. Oh, just a little bit. Oh, just my a little gosh. busy. Can Let's you, see. What is? Yeah, are you gonna twenty twenty two? Please do, please do, because I yeah. saw a list and like there is a comprehensive like. I think eight game list of titles that I'm like, I want to play those. I genuinely want to play those. Yeah. Um, Oh man. Why? Okay. This is showing me 2021 and that's not what I searched for. Okay. Wait, here's a game. Game informers list is usually pretty good though. They don't have the new destiny on when I checked it last time, but that's okay. Let's see. January Elden ring. uh, uh, And then, Dude, seven days after Elden Ring, we're getting Pokemon Legends. I know, right? I was hoping Pokemon yeah. would get delayed because it looked like, oh, maybe it could. It, the first trailer we saw looked like it could use it. It looked much better in the second one, where I'm thinking they're going to they're going to stick with that date. But oh my gosh, man, I was thinking to myself, like, how am I going to balance those two? Those are two games that are must plays for me. Right. Maybe this list is old because February is not that bad. Horizon Forbidden West. No, it has to be new. Horizon Forbidden West, February 18th. Sifu, February 22nd. Saints Row, February 25th. The only it's and there's no like is it the only game for March is Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous. I've never even heard of that. Oh, that's like a awesome looking Divinity Original Sin style game. Up my alley. It's coming oh, out, I'm looking at it it's now. Coming out on PC this month. Uh this coming month. I'm really pumped for that one. It's okay. really under the radar. Um and then it's going to Xbox and Xbox Game Pass, I think, that month. Wasn't there – um, what was in March? What was in March that I was looking forward to? Oh, uh, Midnight Suns was in March. Oh, dude, this list is a Game Informer. Got to get on it. Yeah. Hold on. There Shot was on a, a tweet I saw. I can find it in a heartbeat. Hold on. There was a, a tweet that I saw. I think it was Imran Khan who posted it because he – I don't know if there was a couple of games – Okay. Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction is apparently in January. Uh, Evil Dead game is in February. The new WWE is in March, which they actually, that's kind of shocking. Yeah. Then you mentioned Destiny 2, The Witch Queen. That's December. That's February 22nd. I know, dude. That's a lot. Oh, looks now. good, too. Yeah, that's that's such a a long ways away. Um, let's see here. Beyond that, what other games were announced here? Let me bring up my list. What did you think of Midnight Fight Express? Does that name uh, ring a bell for you at all? 
Yeah, it rang a bell, but I don't think I saw gameplay until I watched the the Gamescom stream, and I thought the gameplay looked cool. Like, no disrespect to the John Wick game that came out, because I know that was an indie dev that did it. Did not really like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, John Wick Hex just didn't really do it for me. Like, man, this looks like this should have been the John Wick game. <laughs> like, this could have been it. What's interesting so, is you, you mentioned the indie thing, and uh, Jeff Keighley said it was like one polish developer who right. was a father i was like what this game looks what's awesome. it called again midnight fight express and i gotta watch this trailer again it's coming because it was very good and the, the combat man i mean that's what it's all about right but like the combat looks so smooth the destruction of the environments the weapons you can use i mean it looks like it's going to be a really really fun game a good brawler this is a game pass game too yeah Game Pass Summer 2022. So that is that to me, that is on the must play list. And I love that it's coming out in the summer because that's where Xbox indies thrive. And so I'm very, very excited about that one. There were a lot of cool indies shown, like uh, the TMNT game, April O'Neil. Yes. Mm-hmm. Looking good, Maddie. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that game's looking very good. I know, right? No release date yet, but based off the image layout, I think they got more characters on the way. Dude, I want an arcade stick to play that game. <laughs> like, there's like every, maybe once every two years, there's something that I think, man, I wish I had an arcade stick to play that. Really? And, uh, yeah, maybe I don't I know. Just I just don't feel like it would be so satisfying. You do, because, like, I, I'm so satisfied with the current controller. Maybe I've gone stagnant. Mm. I Like, some people like the the steering wheels for racing games. You mentioned arcade sticks. There's those fighting pads that some some players use for, for serious fighting games. I don't I don't know. I can't imagine myself mm. getting in on those. I like the controller. Mm. Yeah, I mean when I played so the Turtles game that I grew up with was Hyperstone Heist mm. on the Sega Genesis. And so man, that was good. A lot of people I know that uh Turtles in Time is supposed to be better, but that we didn't have that game. Like it was like yeah. me and uh who I've mentioned before, my uncle who's just a few years older than me. We uh we only had Hyperstone Heights. So I didn't even know Turtles in Time was existed at the time. So yeah, yeah, I, uh, I I never actually owned that game. I I only had access to it through a friend's house. Uh, I and and still to this day I don't own it because I don't own an SNES. Uh, but I, I guess I do own it. I own the arcade cabinet that has it. So right, technically I do have it, but the cartridge I do not. And so this game, Shredder's Revenge is uh, whenever it comes out i'm there that moment like i i will buy it twice so if if there's like a physical release which i doubt there will be but if there's if there's a physical release and i can play it like eight hours early if i download it at midnight i will download it at midnight and then buy it physically i do not care like i this is one that i'm so fucking excited for because as a long a lifelong tmnt fan you know, I grew up during the era of Konami TMNT games with uh, Battle Nexus, Mutant Nightmare. Those were great games. The original TMNT 2003 beat them up. Those were great games. And then I don't know what happened. The Ninja Turtle license got treated like shit since then. And if you look at any of the games that have come out since then, they are either rushed, terrible, or these ass Nickelodeon spinoffs. And so I'm just happy to see Nickelodeon giving it to a developer who clearly cares, Dotemu, who's worked on retro games and has done a great job. Dotemu helped uh, make uh, Streets of Rage 4, which was very good. So I have confidence that they're going to get TMNT to the place it needs to be. But like this is after getting Mutants in Manhattan, which I've made multiple videos on how bad that is. This is after getting Out of the Shadows, which was a game that had the potential to be like a Ninja Turtles Arkham game, but was broken and did not have the time because Activision didn't give it to them. I mean, it's just been passed around from, like, bad company to bad company. Like, Nickelodeon's mishandled it in my eyes, um, and Activision mishandled it completely. You know, they they tanked the franchise. And so I'm just hoping this restores TMNT love where we will see more games. Because I literally have, in my head, my goal is to one day make a TMNT game. Because I I have the fucking take it to the bank ideas for this series because I have read the comics. I have watched the shows. I admittedly haven't watched the originals. I'll say that. But I feel like I have a good enough knowledge to do something with that series. And 
I feel like there's just so much untapped potential that it's been it's actually just relieving to watch someone make something that's good with the series. Dude, it's funny too cuz I was looking at this uh the the Turtles game Mutants in Manhattan cuz that was made by Platinum. Mm -hmm. It's so unfortunate because it's like that's a match made in heaven. It feels like You're right. Yep. And Platinum did a good job with well, dude, so they did that horrible uh Legend of Korra game also. Yeah. But the Transformers game they did was well received. So Yeah, that was when Platinum's really good now, right? Like they did Near, right. they did Astral Chain, which I'm like the only person on this planet who seems to like it. Shout out to the couple <laughs> of patrons who have written in about it. But like look, I think that game is some of their best work. Bayonetta, right. of course. But this was their time where they were doing, for those who don't know, an A team, B team, and C team. And let's just say Dustin brought up Cora. We talked about TMNT. You know when the C team was getting to work. <laughs> you just knew it when you played it. And they they were uh between that and Scalebound, they nearly collapsed as a company. Uh they were very fortunate to have been saved by of all series near Automata. That's what really gave them life again. And I think they learned some storytelling tools and Brought it to Astro Chain and made a, a phenomenal game there that sold, I think, a couple million copies. So there, there are people out there who who do like it. Uh, I hope I run into someone who, who does, you know, get to shake their hand. But, um, yeah, man, I, I, I it's a it's interesting to see how that game flopped Mutants in Manhattan and how clearly good of a fit it was. Because especially the art style at first was, <laughs> I mean, I remember being so convinced it was going to be good, man. When I first saw that, because I'm like, holy shit, they're not doing like the, the Nickelodeon style. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> they're doing yeah. the IDW comics and they, oh, dude, I could go on all day. I'll spare us all. Maddie, here's something interesting about Platinum because I'm, I'm reading up on them again right now is I didn't know. First of all, they have a bunch of projects announced right now. Yeah, yeah. They have something called Project GG, which I don't know what that is. Bayonetta 3, which has been MIA for literally years now. Mm -hmm. Babylon's Fall, which everyone thinks looks like junk right now. Yeah. And then this is one I totally forgot about. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, which they're not even heading up development anymore. It's been moved over completely to Psy Games. Mm -hmm. So unless maybe the partnership with Platinum was like, hey, make us our combat system and we can do the rest, like maybe something like that, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would just hate to see like Babylon's fall, like be another setback for them. I would too. Yeah. It's, it's really odd that they wanted to even try to go in the live service department. This is what I was worried about is because they got an investment from 10 cent right after they released astral chain. And when mm -hmm. they did that, I, I remember tweeting about it going, why like i just sung your praises i remember making a video on astral chain it was like 13 minutes long just breaking everything down and i see that and think to myself this could be really bad because they're trying to go independent self-publish all that stuff i don't really feel confident they have the ip to do so so when they leaned into something like live service i went oh god here we go like this could get ugly real quick so Crossing my fingers for them. I think something like Bayonetta 3, because it's been gone so long, there'll be an explosion on social media when it's actually revealed. Some obscure-ass image from a trailer will go viral. It'll help market it. They'll sell a million extra copies because of it. We know the, the typical spiel with this stuff, so I'm sure they'll be okay. Right. Be, right. Be this Grand Blue Fantasy game looks cool, though. Oh, dude, yeah. Um, yeah, Grand Blue Fantasy is underrated. I mean, they made a fighting game. I think it was... You brought up Psy yeah. Games. I think Psy Games did make the fighting game for that, and that was really good too yeah interesting yeah what were you gonna say sorry i cut you off oh no no you're good i was just gonna say uh beyond that i think we hit a lot of the major games there at gamescom i don't have any more i want to talk about uh yeah i'm looking like jurassic world evolution 2 vampire the masquerade blood hunt ass uh new world open beta sifu got a new trailer continues to look really good that's coming february 22nd Oh, one more, actually. Sorry. Yeah. Cult of Lamb. The Devolver Digital oh, Published Game. Oh, yeah. What did you think of this yes. one? So, I think this game mostly, to me, looks awesome. 
okay. uh, just because it is like Zelda with don't starve and Animal Crossing kind of hybrid. Really, and don't starve is great comparison. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah, it's got that vibe for sure. The only thing I don't like is that it has a bit of the tired modern like American cartoon look, like almost like Adventure Time. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think Adventure Time was great and really set like a new wave of cartoons in the US, but now it's like everything looks like Adventure Time. <laughs> what was this? Oh, it's Cult of the Lamb, right? Yeah, Cult of the Lamb. I need to see this trailer again too, just to remember. I feel I agree yeah. with you with the art style to me wasn't super appealing, but I felt because it was so off the whole like the whole trailer had an off vibe to it that I felt the art style almost lent itself to the feeling the game was creating for me. Right. I do like the overall, like I'm watching this trailer again, and what I really liked is that the the characters are flat. Not like, I mean, it's kind of like Paper Mario, honestly, that it's like they're in a 3D world, but they're just flat characters. But the lighting is really neat in the way that uh, different things happen on screen. So yep. I do like that aspect quite a bit. This is one I have my eye on for sure. Yeah, it's something with Devolver. They just they pick out these games that fit that Devolver vision of wacky weird and crazy but still good right like it, it, you see it and you're not like oh this is just strange it's like oh this is a game that could be good because it looked like there was town management elements you you could like lead your own cult in a church or it looked like uh there was interactions with the citizens where you could like screw them over kind of remind me of fable in a way and so I, i'm i got my eye on this one as well i feel like this could surprise a lot of people if it's what we're hoping for. But Dustin, that's all I've got to say about Gamescom. Is there anything you wanted to touch on before we move on? The only thing to touch on, there's Elden Ring previews out. I'm going dark. I've decided. I'm going to try to go dark between now and January. It's going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, good luck. But, because I already, dude, I already had people in my Discord like, Dustin, did you see this? I'm like, mm. no. Please don't. I don't want to know. I just want to go in fresh if Man, I can. Yeah, I wasn't going. I was considering talking about it, but yeah, I will. I will leave it for your sake, Dustin. We won't subject. We you shall to, see to the in depth yeah. details. We don't know anything about Elden Ring. Plus, I do have a haircut in just under an hour. So for for once, it's me who's got to usher the show show along into the next okay. segment, right? Like, yeah, I've got to make no problem. the call. I'm I'm the one taking my girlfriend to the local food trucks this time. Only it's. Only it's not quite. I mean, it's haircuts. Yeah, which haircuts are good. <laughs> they but feel not great. Quite. I love a haircut, right? Like they, like especially when they take just real quick side tangent. They take like the little buzz thing and they go around your ear. And they start to like shape oh. up the back of it. You you have to get that. You have a tight haircut. You know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, dude. My my part. barber, he he do, he puts the hot towel on your neck oh. and then does the straight razor on your neck. Oh, that's great beautiful that's beautiful great. thing yeah absolutely i think of um my my other thing is as someone with longer hair when they shampoo you oh see yeah i don't get that done no nope, but it is no nice i've had that ass done. scalp afterwards or like your hair on your neck it's just all you just leave clean you leave oh clean. yeah such a good feeling ah oh, go get your hair cut ladies and gentlemen all right got it let's get into the patron questions First one, surprise, surprise, it's Natural we go. Calamity. Hello, ham fam. I know what you're thinking. Natural is the first question this week. What is this chaos? Yes, it is I. So for those who need a point of reference, last week at the end of the show, we noted that no Natural Calamity was there, and he's normally the final question. He always seems to write in and is the last one. This time he's the first. I did miss last week, but I got a laugh out of both of you pondering my absence. It brought a big smile to my face knowing I was missed. So thank you for that. I want to say thank you for allowing me to keep up my two-question maximum, which I kept up week after week, except last week. Because ham is my love, my joy. It is part of my pastime and never fails to give me joy at the end of my week, watching you trip and fall over my weekly crafted sentences, which I have pondered over for hours on end. Now, after all that rambling, it's on to the questions. All right, Natural, let's see what you got for us. Number one. I just came out of watching The Suicide Squad for the second time, but one thing about the expertly crafted movie is bothering me. They basically showed all of it in trailers i was lucky not to see them before uh my first time 
but why do movie and game makers die by this sword? I know they need to market it, and maybe it's my fault I follow too closely, but why not take tactics to hide more of your movie so it's more of a surprise? Make fart, fake parts. I almost said fart parts. That's funny. Fart parts. Yeah, make fart parts <laughs> of the movie possible. Uh, have the trailers uh, only be of the actors in character being silly than talking about the movie itself. What are some thoughts? Uh, what are some of your thoughts on this, and what are some tactics that can be taken by the devs? I just want to toss in. The, oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me finish this because he says no second question this week. I just want to say Gamescom started off a little rocky for me. The first day coming off very lackluster. By the second day, it brought the hype. Saints Row blew my mind. And I felt myself getting teary-eyed at the Halo trailer shown. Riders Republic actually looks like something that will bring me into those types of games. And many more games left me feeling impressed with the releases coming despite the pandemic. So one question for Natural as well. I don't know. I hope he's, hope he's all right. He might be going through yeah. something. Um, all right. So I just want to throw out there that... My latest example of game makers ruining something in a trailer is uh, Neo The World Ends With You. I mentioned, we talked about this last week, the final trailer. So I beat it this week. Yeah. And I went back and looked at the final trailer they released for this game, Dustin. Oh my fucking God. That's Square Enix, dude. Dude, it's a, I, it took me about 32 <sighs> hours or so to beat. And I'm like, that's a long adventure. There's a lot to show there. But the game didn't have many cutscenes. And so every cutscene that's in the game is in the trailer because they're like, they got to sell it somehow. So they just marketed the whole end of the game, man. It was really sad to see. But what can developers do and why do they tend to just spoil their game via the trailers? Or the movies, by well, the way. I've always wondered, especially with movies, you have to imagine there's extensive market research that's done. And I've I've started to wonder if we are the people, as people like me are the anomaly that really care about spoilers or people that are like invested in games or movies or whatever. Like that's the, like, honestly I could probably check out the Elden Ring stuff today and it would not spoil it for me. But like, I'm just thinking that I want to get into that zone now because I know that eventually they're going to start showing like boss fights and things of that nature. And I just don't, want to do that because i love the feeling of seeing a new from software boss for the first time mm -hmm. in game mm -hmm. it's a magical thing so i don't know why they do i mean square enix like we said is particularly bad about this kingdom hearts dude they showed every fucking world yeah. before the game came out yeah you gotta imagine that there is something that it's like well we already have people hooked so let's hook the people that may not be interested until they see this That's or true. this yeah, or whatever the more, the more they know the more of a chance like you cast a wide net right yeah. right i don't know though yeah i hate it i've become a a first trailer for the most part like obviously my game coverage withstanding then i'll watch everything um i'll take the dive i'll take the risk but if it's something like the world ends with you we'll stick it with the, that example i watched one trailer and that was it i was like okay i'm sold on this um maybe it's because i'm more uh invest in the ecosystem where i've sort of like learned the the that the deeper you go the more you ruin for yourself for me a strong example of that was fallout 4 if anyone wants mm -hmm. to go listen to this episode ham radio podcast we had young yeah on we were breaking down our story speculation and we pretty much fucking nailed tit for tat the main story arc for fallout 4 and everything that Whoa. was going to happen because of just the trailers and we studied them and Sticking with that, you note that Bethesda spoiled the ending of Fallout 4 um, with the with the nuke. Um, they spoiled that in the trailer. They showed that shot, and everyone thought, well, well certainly it's not the ending, because they thought it would be like a side quest in Fallout 3 where you blow up a town. And the people are really hyped, and then you find out it's like an end moment, and it's like, what the fuck? You know, at least I, I remember being really disappointed by that. Um, so it's something consistent where... They must have the market research that suggests this does improve our sales when we show the cool big epic moments, right? I don't think I don't think a game would sell more if they showed like Fallout 4's beat for beat exploration, say. But showing a big nuke going off in the heart of the city, the Commonwealth, a little bit of a different story. Um But what can they do to sidestep it? You have to give hints, right? Because hardcore fans discuss and that catches the more casual fans. I think it just takes really 
really well crafted well thought. like you need the creators involved to be like this should be shown this should not be shown that level of thought which i don't think many big brands have the benefit of doing i think the marketing department is separate from the creatives for good reason and in this case bad reason especially because now that i think about it dustin i you know me and carrick interviewed a guy who um did trailers uh, for for game companies and they sort of just hand him the build and him and his team go in and play the game and capture shots and put the trailer together themselves. So I don't remember if he said, but I don't think there's like a specific rule list that needs to be followed. So. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's, it's interesting to hear you talk about piecing together all the pieces for a fallout four <laughs> in the story. You got to wonder how many instances of that there are with games overall. Um, I just think it's gotten that. easier. That's the problem, right? Is like Fallout mm -hmm. 4 technically was marketed well, where they showed big moments, but it was since it's a big sp sprawling open world game, you can't really stitch it all together unless you're paying very close attention, like myself and a few others were. But nowadays, everything is being shown because every company is trying to just maximize their profit. And so I think what's happening is it's becoming really easy to piece those things together than it ever has been. I think that's where the issue lies. Have you ever had that where you've studied trailers enough where you've pieced together a story before you've even played it? I don't know about story. I do remember certain trailers, watching them over and over and analyzing them. Like uh, some of them, which ended up not being really even real, like the halo two E three demo. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember this? Like, it was one of the. It's like, dude, I gotta find this. Um, two thousand three E three demo, I think it was. It might have been. Uh, it's it's funny because so much of the game is like so different. Like the sounds <laughs> of a lot of the weapons is different. That whole level structure is completely different. Like, it's um, it's crazy. Yeah, that was but, back when like you think of like Watch Dogs. Like that was when we were during an, a long standing era where what we saw at E three may have been completely separate from the final product. Like, E3 levels were a thing. Yeah. They still yeah, kind of are, right? I mean, it's just not as... as uh, It's such a time and money sink, and I don't think companies can afford it nowadays. Yeah. That re you reminded me that I got to... Uh, I don't rem remember it being any different, but I got to play Dark Souls 3 before it came out at PSX, mm. and that was very cool. Oh, yeah. I don't think I'd do that now, though. I think if I well, mm, mm. if I had the chance to play Elden Ring early, would I do it? I think, I think, yeah, probably. yeah. Business decision probably. there. I couldn't resist that's why, that. That's why I say, like, with these hands-off gameplay previews that we've been hearing more and more and more about, I'm very against them. Um, but I always tell people, like, yeah, Bethesda said, hey, come check out Starfield, or Xbox, is like, hey, come check out Halo. It's like, at a point, yeah, I'm hurting myself and my audience by not checking it out, but you know, playing it, if any, if I ever got any hands-on opportunities, I, I typically take them because it's like, that's the most intimate coverage you can get where the company has no say. Like, you just have played the thing. It's your thoughts right. now. So, to me, yeah. it's, I, I always take those. But if you don't want to hurt your experience, then I totally get that. Right. My fat cock is our next write-in. A couple of weeks ago, Dustin mentioned one of my favorite breweries in 21st Amendment. Absolutely nailed it on the fruity beets. Never take, tasting good. Beets? Yeah, yeah. He meant to put beers. Yeah, I was going to say. I, I, <laughs> the I'm fruity just, beets. <laughs> <laughs> the fruity beers never tasting good, but doing it right. Their blood orange brew is amazing. So what's something oh. you didn't think you'd enjoy food or drink wise that absolutely rocked your socks? Secondary comment, Back for Blood looks fine, but World War Z has a big new expansion dropping. If you're choosing Back for Blood over that, you're making a huge mistake. The maps, the gameplay, everything about that game just makes it so much more sense or makes so much more sense. Apologies. I feel like those who don't succeed are those who don't realize you can run up the middle of all the zombies and not get swarmed. Strategize. Mm. A little bit of defense for World War Z there. I guess it's under fire. A food okay. or drink that you other that that you didn't think you'd enjoy, but absolutely rocked your socks. Hmm. Mm. That's a tough yeah. one. Yeah. I don't know. 
I've had food that I've grown into. Even yeah, that I'm struggling same. to think of. Like I've had food that I know I didn't like and I had again and now it's I think of seltzer. Like I'm a big seltzer drinker now. Oh, me that's actually a great one. Right. That's a great example. And I did not like seltzer as a kid. I thought it was the dumbest thing, actually. I didn't understand why people wanted bubbly water is what I called it. Now, I don't know what it I get it. It's connected. I love seltzer. Dude, my dad. My dad was on the seltzer game way before the hipsters and every, you know, all the millennials <laughs> were into it. For LaCroix. LaCroix. Yeah. <laughs> I remember in elementary school, we'd go to like Walmart because they had like great value seltzer oh and he God. would buy it by the case. <laughs> and I would every once in a while take a swig of one and be like, yeah. like it tasted like so strange. I'm like, why? Yeah. But he, he was on it for everybody. But now I fucking love, I love LaCroix. I love, well, yeah, I'm kind of a LaCroix boy to the point where I feel like I don't want to try other brands. Cause I feel like I'm faithful at this point, okay. which is dumb. Brand loyalty. But, I, you know, I respect it. There's some other good ones like uh, Polar is a good brand. They have like a orange cream sickle flavor. Oh, it's very good. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've um, I feel like I've been going through too many bottles, so I've in invested in a soda stream. So you can carbonate your own drinks. You you like put the little uh, bottle full of water in. You press the top. It, it like shoots CO two in, and just like oh, yours and. Now you've got seltzer and then you can, if you want to put little droplets of flavoring in there, I don't, but, um, that's how I've been consuming my seltzer now. And it's been quite good. A food though, a food, I'm trying to think of like a, a thing I've ate and been like, Oh wow, that's way better than I thought it would be. Uh, you know what? I used to not be a sushi guy. I love, I, I don't even know how either. I, I used to mm. not like sushi. And now it's like one of my true loves, like one of my go-to takeout meals. Mm, sushi. I like sushi in small amounts, mm. but it's still, it's weird. Like I like like where you get uh, like, it's like a little bit of rice and a piece of tuna on top. Sure. I like that. But like I was at an all you can eat sushi place and for a wedding, which was nice. Right. But, I got to the point where at one at one point I just took a bite and my mouth like my body it didn't reject it like I didn't throw up <laughs> but it like made my stomach turn like there's still some part of me that's a little freaked out by sushi you know and I just like hmm. I had had like maybe I don't know ten or twelve pieces at oh, that point okay. maybe not that much I probably had like I don't know six or seven that sounds about right and then something about that one bite I was like Ugh, like no more I can't no more raw fish right. can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I I you know I could say one that I fell off of that I used to love growing up and that's hot dogs. I used to love hot dogs. I even last year Dustin I was a pretty big hot dog guy because you taught me the spiral cut. That was a major yes. piece of the puzzle. Yes, Maddie. But when you look into how hot dogs are made and I just it's fucking gross, man. And I guess, you know, as Americans we're pretty accustomed to just saying don't tell me what it's made of i just want to eat it because it tastes good hot dogs to me i've had one bad experience with where like i was at a rangers game got a nice hot dog i was in college you know so it was 2013 I take a bite and it actually like my body rejected it and when i say rejected Ooh. it like i swallowed it and back up it came like it was Ooh. i've never had that happen with any other food before so since then my my feeling about hot dogs has has really transformed so it's hard to think of something that I love now because, you know, it's only that love is only ascended. Like something like mac and cheese went from good to great. But, you know, it's here's an opposite, Maddie. I used to do this is going to shock some people. No, oh, no. When I was a kid, I used to like circus peanuts. Huh. You know what I'm talking about? The little marshmallow. Oh, orange you had to like marshmallow. crack them. No, these are like orange marshmallows that are shaped like peanuts. I don't know what you're talking about. Maddie, you know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Hold on. Circus peanuts. Circus Everyone peanuts. Everyone fucking hates these, dude. And I've had them now as an adult, and I can, like, take a bite of one, but they are pretty gross. But you like them okay, as Maddie, a kid. But I liked them as a kid. I was all about these when I was a kid. 
Uh, dude, what the fuck? This won't send. Okay, wait. I'm just gonna send you this Wikipedia article. This is okay. This is important. Oh, I've seen these. These are marshmallows. Wow. They are technically peanut shaped marshmallow candy. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, they used to be. Yeah, they're pretty be... gross. Huh. Okay. These used to be at my grandma's house all the time. Oh yeah, I'm sure that you know grandmas, the older generation, probably yeah. love this shit. Yeah, my grandma. Loved what is it with older people liking weird candy? You know, they grandmas always have like the bit of honey. You know, those mm-hmm. like real they get stuck in your teeth. A lot of a lot of black licorice. You know, stuff like that. They the the they love the weird candy. Yeah, man. It's a generational thing. Do you like candy corn? Yes. Candy corn. Candy good. corn That's is actually an fantastic. answer. That's an answer. I used to not like candy corn. Now I can throw a couple down. I like a little candy. Listen, corn. Maddie, I'm gonna say this, even though this is your podcast. If you don't like candy corn, unsubscribe. <laughs> Just take my business. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind. It's fine. Unsubscribe from Mr. Maddie Plays YouTube channel. Send him hate mail. You know, whatever. <laughs> I don't care. We die on the hill of candy corn in this house. So you love candy corn. Yes, and I can't stand the candy corn slander. I can't. I will not have it. I didn't it. know there was a lot of it. I thought candy corn was like, uh, oh. if, if you don't like it, you just leave it. You know, it's like you understand. There's a mutual exception that like this is this is quality enough. Yeah. I feel like candy corn is like circus peanuts in that the people that hate it really strongly hate it, but mm. there's more fans of candy corn than there are the peanuts. So uh, it's become somewhat of a battle. Uh, you got to fight for your right. For the the candy corn, <laughs> there's I don't know what right. <laughs> there's uh, <laughs> I um, I think of as a kid, you got me down the rabbit hole. Like I think of Big League Chew, incredible Dude. sour apple Big League Chew. Oh my, the God. Big Leg Chew. That's yeah. what being in Pittsburgh they say the leg. This big um, leg chew. <laughs> well, there was a kid when I was in seventh grade who had a business where he would buy Big League Chew from Sam's Club in bulk oh and then he would sell it for a buck that was a thing in my school too that's wild dude he made he made like decent money doing that because everyone was like fuck yeah big league chew let's fucking go Mm -hmm. um i don't know if he eventually got shut down there's like i think there was there's like a school policy about against like student businesses or something (laughs) which i'm like god forbid it's just it's just a dollar for some big league chew it's not like he's selling heroin or something just take it easy no i agree i agree so innocent enough yeah. Let's move on to our next question. Boy Goya writes in, happy to meet you here in the ham zone. Want to know your opinions on if Game Pass should have a family plan subscription tier where someone could maybe pay 20 to $25 a month and connect multiple accounts to the same Game Pass subscription. If you aren't a fan of that, could you think of an alternative system that could accomplish something familiar or similar? Sorry. Glad to see a fresh coat of paint on ham hall walls. Thanks for the thoughts, everybody. Our pleasure. Thank you for your excitement. Dustin, family pan- plans for um, Game Pass. What do you feel about that? I think it's necessary when the service grows, but how do they go about it without limiting the potential subscribers they can net? I feel like every other major subscription, maybe I shouldn't say every other, many other major subscriptions offer family plans, and I take advantage of them. Uh, I have uh, Apple Music, which I have set up for on a family plan that I use for... Uh, Holly and both of my parents are on it. So, which I think it's technically supposed to be same household, but I'm like, fuck you. They're my, they're my family. Like, so uh, we have that set up. And then what's the other, I have a, Oh, YouTube premium offers a family plan that I also, I, it's like, I think it's an extra five bucks and you get multiple accounts. And I don't know. I I could see it being more with technologically advanced gamers who would be like, yeah, for $20, maybe, maybe it's like limited where for, for $20 a month, you get access for three accounts, not like six. Whereas I think that's the case, but yeah, I could see something like that, but I don't know. Do you, do you think that it would, uh, be too too many people would be skimping out and it would hurt their 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 bottom line. Yeah, because I think of it. I think like what would stop me and you from doing a family plan, for example, right? 
Right. That's my first thought is it's not going to be limited to just household families. There are going to be groups of friends who take advantage of it where they're all throwing five bucks in and or, or however much it is and getting this family plan uh, where they're paying less for the same service. I think this has to be like any subscription service, a part of your growth plan, your trajectory. Like once we reach this amount, we'll incorporate this. I just think they need to get to that number they're looking for first where they can accept that the growth will then slow down a little bit. Maybe it'll grow a, a little bit quicker though. And the reason I say that is because more people will see the, what has always been uh, the, the, the pushing point for this is the value of game pass, the over delivering of it and go, Oh, I can sign up for a family plan now. And so they may see a spike in subscribers because so many people who maybe are even non gamers, are like signing up for family plans because it's so valuable to them. Like I don't have to spend 70 bucks on two games for my kid. I can get them both game pass through this one family right. plan. So maybe that's how you inflate it. Um, but I, I just feel like they want to hit a certain number first before they start getting a little more charitable. Cause maybe I'm incorrect, but I feel like the design and release of games you have to be a little bit more careful about than that of like Netflix with TV shows or Disney with, with their shows and movies. Maybe it's because the IP they're working with that I say that, but I just feel like Xbox needs to be a little bit more careful because games are more expensive uh, in the terms of their selling price. So hold on, Maddie. I searched. Here's a Reddit post. Just a reminder that game pass can be shared. Oh. Though this seems like some back alley shit. Oh. It's like profile A owns Xbox A. Profile B owns Xbox B. Profile A signs in on Xbox B and goes to setting and X makes Xbox B his home Xbox. So maybe, no, maybe this is intentional. Um, This might be a nice way if you own both the Xboxes and have a family, you know, two brothers like you mentioned mm -hmm. or a brother, and sister, whoever, whatever. Two kids. Or a kid and a dad, or a kid and a mom, whatever. Um, this could be an option. Yeah. If this is something Xbox condones, but I mean, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't say this. I'm going to though. But I'm like, <laughs> if if Sony lets you do it, or Xbox lets you do it, then you you own it and you pay for it. Like I don't know. To me, it's just like if it's out there as an option to do it, then do it. Yeah. Like, I agree. You're talking. Wait, you're talking about like if you can get two people on the same plan. Like, let's say there's if Xbox is like, yeah, if you can have an account signed in on two Xboxes, two or three Xboxes, and on those you can use Game Pass on all the accounts on each, whatever. Like, as long as that account is set as a the primary or whatever. And you and your buddy want to make an arrangement to do that, and Xbox yeah. lets you do it, even the like you know. I to me, I'm just like, that. okay, unless there's the thing where it's like, do not do this across different IPs, or you will get banned. Then I would suggest not doing it. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's no, I agree. there's a thing on the like this for PlayStation where people have they share an account on PlayStation. Like they'll do it. They'll have it on multiple consoles. And I personally don't want to do that just because I don't it to me it's like it's my account like i don't want anyone else fucking around with it even if it's my friend mm -hmm. so but if i don't know if you want to make that arrangement I, whatever yeah like game sharing i i do that on playstation you know and it's yeah it's immensely helpful uh we have vault 101 guy up next happy friday ham crew couple questions how does the VAT system work from the character's perspective in Fallout? I thought it was the Pip Boy, but you can use VATs when you encounter rad roaches before picking up the vault uh the Pip Boy in Fallout 4. Also, what's your favorite quote from a game? Ooh, we're off the walls here. Uh I don't I always thought the VAT system was through the Pip Boy, like you were analyzing their body. I'm guessing that this is just they didn't account for this one specific tiny section of other uh, like compared to the rest of Fallout. So I don't think you can use VATs in like Fallout 3 till you have the Pip Boy. So it might have just been like a do we really need to wall off this mechanic for this very small lore bit? Which I feel like Fallout fans are kind of sticklers on, so maybe they should have. But just um 
just worth considering. But I, I don't I don't think it's a big deal, and I think it does go through the the bat system. As for a favorite quote, Dustin, I have to say. As time goes on more and more, I feel a little crazy when it comes to game quotes because I don't have too many that stick out like on a level of some philosophical statement or I think of moments, not specific lines. Is that do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if I have like a favorite quote. Do you have a favorite quote? Uh, yeah. A lot of times the the quotes are tied two things like you said like i think of uh in bioshock at the oh spoiler alert okay Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna i know it's old but i want to put it out there if you want to skip ahead at the end with andrew ryan when you're like killing him with the with the golf club and he's like a man chooses a slave obeys yeah Uh, which he also has this quote i just looked up that was uh, we all make choices in life but in the end our choices make us and uh man that's a good one too that is a good one there's a there's a lot of i feel like just in video games there's so much happening and it's so fast that it's very hard for the line to process it's usually the moment that combines a bunch of really well-written lines so i think of in mass effect with the first one with your first encounter with the reapers uh where, where you're you're talking to them and it's this moment of them saying to you like you exist because we allow it and, it's, and, and, mm. and there's a bunch of lines surrounding it of them est- establishing like we are more powerful than you we know and we will come to wipe you out when we want to like you, you know you're on our time limit and to me that was powerful but it wasn't like this that's the line that sticks out but i don't know if that's like one of my favorite quotes it's like that moment there was powered by i guess that quote if anything um of course yeah a man chooses a slave obeys is probably one of the most iconic lines in all video games oh yeah you know, it's it's hard. it's really hard to top that one. Um, There's a lot of good silly ones too, or not meant to be silly, but like uh, in Symphony of the Night, the beginning where he's like, "What is a man? A, a miserable pile of secrets?" And then he like throws his glass or whatever. Like that's that's fun, but it's it's not like meaningful. It's just funny mm-hmm. thinking about uh, that quote in the way it's said. But yeah, lots of good ones. Yeah, I'm 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 digging deep, but I'm really a moments guy, I think. I don't you know, I, I think of gameplay moments and, and narrative beats, but not really the specific line. Like I think of a twist. Like we'll just say Kotor has a twist. It's like there's not something that's said there that stands out to me. It's like the the way they have executed a moment. And I think that's building up from lines and dialogue that that suggests something else throughout a whole game. And then it sort of subverts your expectations. So it's like the whole experience and the and the quotes, if you will, the writing allows for that to be so mind boggling. But uh, that would be my answer. Sorry, it's a little Maddie, bit of an underwhelming one, Vault 101 guy. You made me think of my favorite movie quote. But then as you were saying that, I realized it's a movie moment. Uh, but it's from Lord of the Rings, you bitch. And you haven't seen it. So What? Maybe I haven't seen it. I thought you haven't seen Lord of the Rings. Oh, of course I have. You... Who am I thinking of then that hasn't seen it? Or you... is it that you don't care about Lord of the Rings? Who is it that hasn't seen Lord of the Rings? I have seen both that and The Hobbit. I'm not like I take, I, I, love... I take back the bitch. Then that's no, okay. I I, I would call can... someone a bitch if I suspected it though. I love them, is... but I don't. I feel like when it's I say Jimmy. I love them, it's that motherfucker it's Jimmy, Jimmy Champagne. Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> that's surprising. I know he's like a horror movie buff, but I feel like he's just you know, into movies more than most, and that seems like a must-watch. He, I think, has seen them, but he doesn't care about them, which is even worse, actually. Yeah, right. Like he, he, he's made a, a decision after seeing greatness. Yeah. Fucking Jimmy Champagne, who's you're going to meet. Yes, I know. Weekend. Yeah, we were talking about that. I'm very, very excited cool. for that. Oh, but that, the, the moment is that, again, spoilers, at uh, Return of the King when he says, my friends, you bow to no one. <laughs> Um, with the, to the hobbits the, at the end, yes. and it's yeah, bruh. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is nice, that is like strong conclusion. So good. Cody Richter is our next write-in. Hey, green eggs and ham. 
got a hot take for you too after the Outriders discussion over the past couple of weeks. I played the game at launch on Series S through Game Pass, but lost interest without friends to play with. I recently hopped into a PS5 with a friend through game sharing, and I'm really enjoying it in co-op. Sure, the game has some weird charm to it, such as transition cutscenes and the fade to black load screens, but at the same, at, but at the end of the day, the gunplay is a lot of fun, especially when you sync your abilities with your team. So that brings me to my question. Have you guys ever played a game that you really liked, although it presented multiple flaws slash reasons not to play it? And for me, it's for me, it's really hard not to pick a game other than Outriders as of recently. But do you have one? A very mm, flawed multiple. game that you, you enjoy. I think, uh, actually, I could pick a more recent one. The World Ends With You is, is, Neo The World Ends With You, I should specify, is very flawed. Pacing, uh, it's clearly a little bit lower budget. I, there were moments yeah. where, where you need cutscenes, but... I guess I understand why it's under it's under uh, funded and, and and the situation it's in, so it makes it easier. But there is some clear issues with the game, and I still love it. So I mean, that's a lot of games. I I love, for example, double A RPGs. So King's Bounty Two came out recently. I played around a lot for that. You know, by the way, it's it's for a sponsored video, so I just want to make that clear. But you know, that's a game that I really enjoyed, and and it's definitely got some rough around the edges nature like most double a games do vampire is one of my favorite rpgs of the generation that was double a and that definitely wasn't this fully well-rounded witcher 3 level experience so for me i mean there's tons of games i love because there is that charm like they do a couple of things really well it does come at a cost but i value that a lot because it shows developers are experimenting with what they have right yeah i'm trying to think uh, the Order 1886 was a game that's very flawed that I still think is has a lot of great qualities that are worth appreciating, even if it is I respect that. Uh, rough around a lot of areas, actually. <laughs> I mean, like, the gameplay is a bit cut and paste and samey yeah. throughout, but I think the world is super cool, and I think the graphics for the time were amazing. Oh, gosh, um, yeah. And dude, I just love this idea of like, you know, this the Knights of the Round Table went on, uh, but we're able to survive through this like uh the the fountain of youth. Like right. that's cool. Yeah. And then there's like Tesla is making your weapons and stuff. I'm like, this is It's I, a dude, dope I, universe. They I wish they had a sequel. I do. Yeah, dude, and it sucks now. Um Ready at Dawn is owned by Facebook mm -hmm. uh, and Oculus, so I remember have made to be a great someone video else. on them. That's right. That's yeah. right. My first side quest video. So, but alas, yeah. no more order. Next question comes from Sean Mason. Hey, Maddie and Dustin, over the weekend, my fiance and I had a small group of friends over. While over, we did the typical stuff, games, chatting, eating, etc. For the small, for the most part, the night was a great time. But there was one thing that irked me and some of our guests was one of our guests, a plus one of our friends chewed their food with their mouth open. This is a huge pet peeve of mine. And I couldn't get past it. Every time she took a bite of food, it was like watching a little kid who doesn't know how to eat any better. It was disgusting to say the least. It was so noticeable that a few of her friends in the room texted me asking if they should say something to her or to the friend who brought her. I told them no, but after a few hours and a few drinks, one of my friends couldn't help himself. He stood up and said, I'll be the one to say it. You chew like a cow. Do you have any manners? At this point, my fian fiance and I bid everyone to do and called it a night. So my questions, has your friend ever done anything that made everyone in your friend group uncomfortable? Best Sean M. <laughs> Damn. I mean, this happens when I always feel weird if uh, two people, like uh, a boyfriend and a girlfriend or even a husband and wife, whatever, a couple will say argues in front of everybody mm. or like gets in a little spat and you're like, eh, hey, you know, like you don't really know what to do. Yeah. So, I don't know. I hate mouth chewers too. Oh god, yeah. And I would never tell a mouth a loud mouth chewer that a person I didn't know. I've called out some of my own friends. Oh, uh yeah. You have to. Many times. You have yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's pretty bold though. That is bold. And I'm guessing the drinks were doing some of the talking there, but that's uh that was ballsy and and it's it looks like Sean, you know, took action he's like all right time to usher everyone out of here not, East out. not not in my household not here in the mason household um i will say one thing that definitely makes 
me uncomfortable is like mega PDA when you're with a group of friends mm. and you got like the two friends just pretty much fucking making out. Like it's a very high school college thing. Um, and I remember to me, that was like the, you know, I don't care if you two love each other. That's cool. Like I'm happy for you two. It seems you're very attracted to each other too. That's great. Like I'm thrilled for you. Just, I don't need to see it. Like the grabbing and stuff like I've, yeah, it's yeah. That to me is like the, the weird thing for sure. That, um, could definitely make a friend group uncomfortable is when like everyone's chilling, have a good time. <laughs> you got like a couple just hardcore making out. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like, all no. right, go, go somewhere else guys, please. Thanks. <laughs> That'd be my pick. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's see here. Orange dog is next. Hello, Matty Man, and no fussing, Dustin. Your discussion about coffee and tea last week had me curious. What's your brand of choice? I'm not much of a tea drinker, but I love pure leaf unsweetened black tea. As for coffee, which I cannot live without, my bean of choice is a basic but popular choice, Dunkin' Original Blend. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. Dustin, you were talking about a, I believe you said a Maryland blend that you were having last week. Yeah, Maryland Roaster Ceremony. Okay. Yeah. What um, is your favorite though? So my favorites, I have a few favorite roasters that I really like. Like uh uh Ritual from San Francisco is very good. And there's another one called Kova, which I think they're in Seattle, maybe. Mm. Um Kova is very good. Uh Ceremony is hit and miss. That's the one I was drinking last week. But I I like the fancy pants, like expensive coffee it sucks especially now holly uh today's her last day actually at her job at the coffee shop and so oh. she was able to bring home stuff pretty often uh for you know a good deal and so now the the fancy pants coffee that's like seriously no joke 20 to 25 dollars for 12 ounces uh wow is I'm I'm gonna have to dial back my taste a bit. <laughs> yeah. Because it's no longer gonna be quite the same price. So Duncan though, if I'm going normal brands, mm -hmm. we'll say I like Duncan is decent. Okay. Uh I would I will go to Duncan any day over a Starbucks. Any day. Yeah, sure. I respect that. I think that's a good choice. I yeah, you know, I don't drink coffee. I made that clear. I am a tea guy, and I go with Bigelow, B I G E L O W. And um, I'd say right now, my favorite flavor from them, if you will, because you know I I've talked a little bit about how I don't really throw milk in there. I don't throw sugar right. in there. I'm an herbal tea guy, right? It's the relaxation process of it all. So I love a little chamomile, a little de stressor tea. Uh, but I think my favorite has to go to lemon ginger. There's a little bit of a tang to that. It's good for your digestive system. Right. Um, and it's a good general tea, I think. Like, when I just want to drink tea, but I, I'm very much like a, a dress in need tea drinker. Like, I, even if it technically will not do much of anything, like chamomile, it's like, all right, I need to unwind. I need to de-stress. Give, give me some chamomile, right? Or, you know, the... the um. I like I I think like if I ate something that didn't really agree with me, a little peppermint tea is good. Or or it's winter Ooh. time, a little peppermint tea. But like for me, if it's like I want tea, lemon ginger is the go to. So I think that that is my my favorite. Uh I need to try we had a lot of passionate write ins last week about this Yorkshire milk tea, something like that, mm. that I apparently I need to try. And Yorkshire. so it's like a Yorkshire, like someone said, like throwing a, like they said, it's a, a, they described it as a, and I quote, bitter yet sweet treat. And mm. that's interesting. Cause those Yorkshire two gold go, milk tea. Is that what it's called? Maybe I'm going off okay, a YouTube comment. <laughs> two cups of boiling water, two cups of creamy whole milk, three tablespoons of maple sugar. Oh my. And three tablespoons of Yorkshire gold leaf black tea. I think I need to try this sweetened tea that people are on about, right? Like, mm. I, I feel I have to at least, right? I can't be only herbal tea. Do you fuck with loose leaf? 
what's that? It's like tea that doesn't come in a bag. Like you have oh, to no. either oh, you have to put it in put your it own in the... bag or get like a, a metal yeah. strainer type. I thing. have a metal yeah. strainer, but I've never used it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Loose leaf is great. Uh, it's fun. And you can get some, you can get tea at a good, really good price, like fancy teas if you get them loose leaf too. Mm. I should look into that. Yeah, for sure. They do have one. It was my grandma's. She always had it, so I, I have it now. But um, nice. It sits on my shelf. <laughs> All right. Another question comes in from Lactose the Intolerant 869. Hey, boys, been loving the content you're putting out. Wanted to drop a comment here to show my support. Thank you. I've been playing Hades on my Xbox lately, and I've noticed something after logging into my Switch. I have done a lot of things totally different on this second playthrough. When you go back and replay a beloved game, do you guys find yourselves doing the same thing, or do you replay it totally differently? Does it depend on the game? If so, what's an example? Well, unfortunately, mm. Dustin, I have a mile-long list of examples, but I want to dish this off to you. Yeah, sometimes I'll play differently, but I don't know. Sometimes in the mood... I to just play it the way I always have. Like, uh, I play Dark Souls. I gotta be a sword guy. Like, I'm not gonna play Dark Souls as magic. I know that people like to replay and do different builds. That's cool and all. I'm not really into that. Um, I respect that. So, I, think it's, I think it's good that you stick to your guns. To be honest, I've done replays of, or I've tried to do replays of games with morality systems, like Mass Effect. I don't like being an asshole. Really? I just don't like it. Yeah. What about you, though, Maddie? Oof, I could go on. I mean, I, I love to... I used to be... I think everyone starts off and stay mostly stays in that rhythm of, like, playing in a way that they enjoy most. Uh, as I've embraced the RPG genre more, I like to see what systems you can bend and then break. And what I like to use as a test bed for most games is when I review an RPG, like, if there's choice and consequence, I typically try to be a dick because that's how you can see how well thought out their systems are. Because most games account for if you're the nice guy. But you got to think on a narrative level, what happens when you're a dick and kill someone or screw someone over? Mm. What are the repercussions there? And of course, that's where like morally great choices are the best because it makes that storytelling choice a little bit easier for the writer. Um, so I, long story short, love to go back and play differently now. Um, but generally when I, like when I've been playing the old Republic, this isn't like, this has choices, but it doesn't, it's an MMO. It doesn't have mega consequences. Um, I have been a straight evil person. Every, everyone in my path gets shot. It's so funny. Like if you do an Imperial nice. agent playthrough, there's just like a bracket choice that often says kill them. <laughs> and I shoot everyone on site. Like I, if there's an option there, I don't care what's just happened. Kill them. Um, it's just fun to see the, the reactions, the game and its characters have, um, beyond that though, on a gameplay side, it's a little bit more difficult because certain builds are better than others. And even if they're less worse, some are just more fun or, or, or even if they're better, rather, I should say they are, less fun so i think of like everyone saying magic and demon souls is broken i'm like it's fucking boring though i don't want to play magic build with demon souls uh, right so i don't mess around with that there's a lot of things that go into it but i do typically find myself trying something different but like okay a good example of something i always go back to is like when i play dragon age i just like to be a rogue and i tried to be like a two-handed vanguard i was a quarian in um in inquisition and kind of sucked i didn't really like it um because then once you get stuck with a build that you're not a fan of that's it like once you're 30 hours deep and you s start to see like you're reaching the end of your build you're like ah bad call and you can't go back all right pen and pan is up next what up sham boys simple question crocs or sandals hmm the only Crocs that I've worn are the kind that are meant to be worn as slippers, like the fluffy kind. Right. And my friends made fun of them when they visit me in the winter when I'm wearing them, but they don't know the comfort. And guess what? I bought some different slippers, which these are, the brand wow. is- Wow. Those are on deck. Cat Moz. Cat Moz. You're, and they're organic right wool. Yeah. Nice. But here's the problem. 
they're already all torn up on the inside and no. they've been torn up on the inside. And I'm like, damn, maybe I should have bought the Crocs. Okay. You know, every once in a while you got someone that makes fun of you, but, and dude, here's the thing. If I wear the Crocs now, my stream is going to see them. And no. I don't, I feel like Crocs, I don't know. You do you, right? I personally wouldn't wear them out in public. So if you're going out in public, wouldn't. sandals. But if you want to wear Crocs in, in public, that's fine. You know, I'm not I don't trying know if to... it is. I'm not going to sugarcoat oh. it. I don't know if it is. Okay. Someone's got to tell okay. you, like, they can be comfortable, but they're a home shoe. Okay. They're ugly. And I'm not one to judge someone's style. I have to... I, I match well, but when I, like, go out to the store quickly or when I go to the gym, I don't care what I'm wearing. Like, yeah, there's... So I'm not, I'm not a judgy person. But look, if you're wearing Crocs, someone needs to put a hand on your shoulder and go, look, what the fuck is wrong with you? That These are not okay. These are not okay, man. It's the same thing with... I have a friend, Brian, who wears these fat-ass Skechers. And, you know, they got the big heel block at the end. It's like he's in grade school. And I put my hand on his shoulder. I'm like, Brian... I don't mind if I ask, it has to come out of my pocket. Let's go to the mall and get you a new pair of shoes because those are fucking ugly. It's like, okay. You got to just sometimes be that friend. I'm that friend. Yeah. I will I will just tell it to you, right? Like, I'm not – right. I guess I'm a little bit of a dick, but, like, I'll just – look, man, what are those, right? But you have to have what that, are those? You have to have control. If you're doing that too much, you're just a dick. <laughs> right. You, if you strike at the right time, like, a, a, like an assassin, oh, then – you can change your friend's shoe style. The now I'm looking at Crocs, uh, for the home, like I was saying, and yeah, the uh, home Dustin, that's fine. The classic lined Croc, uh, the clog, which is what I was wearing, uh, sixty dollars. What? Ooh, I thought I these I were got cheap. Those. I think I got them on sale. I must have. I thought these. How much are normal Crocs? Okay, yeah, I, they gotta be twenty dollars shoe. I, if they're more than that, no, Maddie. 50 what? for the regular you're spending just a ten dollar premium on the on the lining on the inside what there might be worth it though dude mine lasted Holy like over shit. a year they might have lasted two years me wearing them at home like every day anytime i've worn not crocs day, but... like to, they're dog walking shoes right like I, I i go out and i feel like they're gonna slip off my feet i don't like yeah i don't like crocs for that it's like it's like a hardened slipper that's it not, is i i don't like it's a horrible idea it really is I feel like it's a fall hazard, an ankle breaker. They're ugly. There's so much. What do you think about? There. What do you think about those shoes that uh, they actually go between your toes? It's like uh, they look like almost. They're not like socks, but they're kind of oh, like, like toe like socks. In the only that your... grip. Yeah. I feel like that's better for your toes to be a little bit more spread out, right? I, I, mm. I feel like I've read that, but. Yeah, people have the toe spreaders that they wear when they go to bed. Mm. But I don't uh, really know what the point of it is, other than it might be good for your foot. I don't know. There's there's little nuances in life that I just can't care about any longer. You know, like no. that, that type of stuff. It's like no. if my feet curl a little bit, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I right. wear toe spreaders to bed. But apparently Pen and Pant wears Crocs to work all the time. I didn't read that part, I don't think. And um, I just roasted his whole life. Well, it depends on what he, what his job is. I don't know. I mean. Or does it? Uh, and then Pant is no, he is, he is unsubbed. He hasn't even heard the end of this conversation. Yeah, he's out. He's, our, he's, he's out. out. <laughs> you know what? He might already been out. Cause I already challenged all the, uh, the candy corn eaters That's true. or the non can the candy corn haters is what I should say. True. There's been a lot of challenging this section. So, uh, we've got two questions left. I've got to leave in five minutes. So do we want to rain check these? Or do you, do you want to rapid fire them? Uh, one of them is just telling you something. Okay, let's. And the other one is about divinity. So <laughs> maybe read the comment and we'll save return to the coda. Okay. For next time. Jay Lopez writes in, have you guys checked out Tale of Two Wastelands mod that runs Fallout 3 off of New Vegas' engine? If you oh, haven't, it's dope. It is a question. It's legit. Adds iron sights to Fallout 3, new features, locations, and mechanics such as sprinting. Really gives Fallout 3 a new vitality for me. Lastly, you can switch between New Vegas and the DC area by hopping on a train for fast travel instead of switching games. Pretty freaking awesome. I got to say, Fallout 3 is the game I'll go back to forever, just like you, Maddie, who will always go back to KOTOR. Anyways, have a good one, and shout out to Felix Check for helping me install the mod. This is one I've actually never played. I've been meaning mm. to for a while. 
Interesting. I feel bad. We got to get Coda in there. We can't just leave. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, we can blitz it. Yeah. Sorry, Coda. Hello, ham dudes. I've recently been playing Pathfinder Kingmaker on a friend's recommendation and have enjoyed it thus far. It's definitely reminiscent of the older or the original Baldur's Gate games by Bioware. And I sometimes wonder if Alcat Studios, the studio who makes Pathfinder, would have been better choice for Baldur's Gate 3. That being said, do you guys have a favorite CRPG? I'd say Divinity Original Sin 2, but Pathfinder has really shown up, and I'm really looking forward to the second game coming early September. I'd recommend giving it a shot one day if either of you have the time. Thanks for the great content always, and I will be. I'll be playing Wrath of the Righteous. But for me, my favorite is... I don't know if Wasteland 3 would qualify as a CRPG, but... I think Divinity Original Sin 2 is the best RPG of the last gen. So that's my pick, personally. Do you have one? I am not really into CRPGs. I'm always looking for the one that will get me into it. Yeah. And I have yet to find right. it. So I respect them, but not my thing. Yeah, I get it. It's it's a hard genre to get into. So. It's a bit obtuse. I, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening and for writing in. Sorry we had the speed at the end there. Just... In five minutes, I've got to leave and go get my hair cut, which is right. You got to look fly, Maddie, for uh, an evening with last stand. Yeah, I'm afraid that I've I've waited a little bit too long. That I'm mm. gonna come in and you know, we talked about that awkward phase. I think because I'm gonna I'm getting cut now, and a week later I'm gonna be showing up. I might have the awkward haircut hair. We're gonna see, but I think in a week you'll be fine. I'm Who hoping. knows though? Because I'm trying yeah. a new style. I probably shouldn't, but I'm I'm gonna try a new style. I'm gonna get a little risque. We'll see. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Gonna try I'm to excited. keep it longer with with a little more shape to it. So we'll, we'll I'm see. hoping Maddie, you'll look so beautiful when I see you in person. <laughs> Imagine I just show up and I, it's I like, can't... holy fuck, Matt, what is that haircut? <laughs> yeah, it's like Maddie, oh, we can't even. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man, that'd be awesome. All right. I respect it. Well, thank you all so much for listening this deep into Ham Radio Podcast episode 316. Once again, we will not be live with a new episode next week because, as Dustin just said, we'll be meeting up, doing Last Stand Media stuff. And then the week after will be the final episode of Ham Radio Podcast. So we hope to see you then. Looking forward to it and our new chapter starting very soon. And until then, please take good care of yourselves, and we'll see you there for the final episode, all right? Peace out. See ya.